going? What's up to you all? Mine it is. Oh, by the way, uh, Peter, what time is it? Hey, fuck, it's <laughs> Thursday and it's six o'clock, which means, James, it's... Quarter to Friday. Quarter to Friday and Friday is a good day. Quarter to Friday and Friday is an awesome day. Well, welcome to it, Mindset. This is Lennox Your Love on a wonderful Thursday, quarter to Friday. My name is Abram and that is Peter and that is James. How are you, gentlemen? Peter? I'm good, hey? I'm really good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, thanks. It's getting a little cold. There's a cold front yes, coming in. Yes, yes. And uh, outside in the studios in Johannesburg at the moment, it's a little chilly out there, and I believe that tomorrow it's going to get even colder. So I think Ooh. we should spare a thought for all those who don't have somewhere warm to sleep tonight. Okay, eh? yeah, we should. And maybe we, we might get some tips later on on what we need to do, some health tips mathematic literacy tips <laughs> kind of like but james i know you have those ones even always, though they don't always. exist how are you i'm good thanks and you i'm good you seem to be tired man what's happening no it's been a long week it's been a long week yeah. let me not ask him Peter, hey? well he wrote uh, a maths test and he also did a maths assignment did all right Got Did like 84 for the one and about 97 for the other. So that's all right. Eh? Wow, well, you deserve to be tired. And I think maybe <laughs> later in the program we'll ask him what advice he can give students yes. as to how to do well in Sh the subject. Sure, be prepared for that, James. What oh, are we yeah. doing today? Right, folks, today we are looking at volume. Remember, we're still looking at space and measurement, and it's one of the topics in mathematical literacy. And the section we're doing in this topic today is that whole section on volume. You'll remember two weeks ago, we looked at perimeter, we've looked at area. Uh, we Last week, John, I think, looked at circumference. And um, he doesn't know this, but I was watching him on TV, and he was quite rude. He spoke about my <laughs> circumference, which wasn't too good. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll get him back on that one. Okay, and so today, we're going to be looking at volume. Awesome. No revenge, hey? No Please revenge. don't. Right. Mindset is we've got so much for you guys. Remember, you can download your notes on land.mindset.co.za. But because we, we are very nice people, for today we've got two options for you. The viewing option and the download option, which will be on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra. Follow us also on Twitter at Lenextra. And remember, on Facebook, you have the challenge question on the wall. And you also have the test yourself questions, whereby if you answer them correctly, you stand a chance of winning this awesome Casio calculator. You need it, James. Nah, you know, man. you can't do maths late. Maths is in the mind. Exi Sorry? <laughs> maths <laughs> is in the mind. So you don't need a calculator? No, you do. No, you definitely need a calculator. You definitely do. This is your best buddy for exam. So guys, we'll be giving you this. And yeah, James won't be giving you guys any answers. So the answers <laughs> are with you on the test yourself questions. <laughs> Back to you, Peter. Right, folks, let's get going. Like we said, today's show is all about volume and what are we going to do in this lesson we're going to introduce and work through questions relating to various three-dimensional shapes volume of a rectangular prism volume of a cylinder volume of a triangular prism and calculations to do with volume as well as costings okay now I always get criticized on my shows because we never finish everything we want to do so let's just get started straight away right our challenge question. Here it is. On a camping trip, James buys a tin of jam. The tin is 90 millimeters high and has a diameter of 6 centimeters. Unfortunately, once open, the tin cannot be closed. So James decides to put the jam into a rectangular Tupperware with dimensions 60 millimeters times 30 millimeters by 25 millimeters. Will all the jam from the tin fit? into the Tupperware. Okay, now folk, this challenge question, I've got something very, very similar. We're going to do a practical, real life demonstration. Okay, mm -hmm. James, you're going to be working tonight. Okay? I will be. Behind that desk where you're sitting, you will see a little like lunchbox. Yeah. Got it? All right, <laughs> get it out for us. Okay, right, there it is. James, open the lunchbox. I'm coming. Cool. And uh, what do we have in there? We got a fruit cocktail and fruit juice. Okay, so we got a can of fruit cocktail. Do you want to hold it up to the camera so everyone can see it? Okay, cool. Now we're not really allowed to advertise, so we're not allowed to tell you that that was made by Rhodes, but um, nevertheless, there it is. Okay. <laughs> 
Then <laughs> there's something else in that Tupperware, James. What is it? It's a Tupperware in the Tupperware. Okay, so <laughs> we have a Tupperware. Now, the kind of question that's in the challenge question is asking us something very similar to what we're going to do now. And the question is this. James goes on a camping trip. Okay, you, is mm. that right? Okay, 100%. so James goes on a camping trip and he's got a tin of jam. Now, guys, you know and I know that the normal human being cannot eat a whole tin of jam at once. But once you've opened the tin of jam, you can't just carry it around while you're walking and camping. You've got to somehow put it in a container that can seal, so when you throw it in your rucksack, it's not going to go sloshing around everywhere. James, we are going to do something very similar from a practical point of view. Okay. Okay. And so what we're going to do is this. If you hold up the tin into the camera, and you also hold up the Tupperware, right? The question arises, will that content, and, and in there we've got some, what's it, fruit, eh? Mm. Fruit, yeah. Fruit, okay. It's a fruit content. Will that fruit fit into that little Tupperware container? Now, I'm going to take it from you, and I'm going to go closer to this camera, and then hopefully they can see. So you can actually see how small this little container is and how big our tin is, okay? Will all this stuff fit into this little container? And that's what we're going to try and solve. Now, in order to do this, to make it interesting, we're going to give James a bit of a challenge, and this is the challenge. When we open this tin, if James says this can fit in here, we are going to put the tin, once it's opened, on the Tupperware, turn it around and pick the tin straight up, and then see if it fits in here. So James, you have got to tell us, before we even do it, whether it will fit or not. If you're confident it will fit, you are going to do that. Okay. And what we might even do, is put it on your head and then do it to see if he's really confident <laughs> about this or not. Right. But before we do that, we've got to help James out a bit. And we've got to give him a chance to make his decision. Remember, he might say this will not fit in here, and we'll honor that. But if he says the contents of this will fit into this Tupperware, he's got to stand by his word. We're going to put it on his head and empty the contents. If it doesn't fit, this gooey syrup stuff will come oozing all around his face. Now we have to put gel in tomorrow. And, okay. <laughs> right. So, we're going to help him. So, James, the first thing we're going to do, what do we have to do with this container and this tin? We're going to decide whether that container, the contents inside, will fit into that container. Okay. And to calculate the contents, what are we actually finding? Looking how much is actually in there, the and, grams. And okay, well, not so much grams, but the volume. Oh, the of okay. Course, the so volumes, we're going to calculate yeah. the volume of this tin, and then we're going to calculate the volume of this Tupperware. And if the volume of the Tupperware is greater than the volume of the tin, then obviously the contents can fit in. Yes, if the volume of the tin is greater than the Tupperware, it won't fit in. Do we agree on this? Yes, sir. Okay. So you are going to measure, James, and you've got to make sure you measure, correct? So I'm going to give it back to you. Okay. So let's look at the container first and foremost, right? So we've got this little Tupperware. Now, James, do you know what sort of shape is that Tupperware? Uh, it's a square. Re yeah, a rectangular prism, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. little rectangle and it's got height, so we're going to call that a rectangular prism. How do we calculate the volume of a rectangular prism? Volume uh, is equal to? Length times, the, or, <laughs> length times the breadth times the height. Okay, cool. So you measure the length of that so long. Length times breadth times the height. Okay? And you are now measuring the length of that container. Let's just move the tin out your way so our viewers can see it. Now, are you going to measure the inside of the container, James, or the outside? The inside. Absolutely. Why? Because the jam doesn't go on the outside. Okay, because the contents goes on the inside, inside of that container. Brilliant. 
All right, so what is our length of our container? 13 centimeters. 13 centimeters, yeah. okay. So it's 13 centimeters. And the breadth? The breadth is also 13. Also 13. And while I'm writing, you're going to calculate the height or measure the height of that container. And remember, it's from the inside, um, not the outside. Because remember, guys, there's a layer of plastic at the bottom of my container. And so if I'm measuring it from the outside, I'm going to take into account that plastic. Now, the gooey um, fruit cocktail that's in that tin can't go in the plastic. So it must be from the top of that base. Okay. It's 3.5 centimeters. 3.5 centimeters. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take out our calculator and let's just shift it to the side so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to say 13 times 13 times 3.5. And that's going to give me a volume of what, James? 591.5 centimeters cubed. Nice. I like that answer. Hey, full marks for that answer. And why is he getting full marks for that answer? Because he used the correct unit. He said centimeters cubed. Why cubed? Because cubed is, volume is always centimeters cubed. Okay, or, or meters cubed. Meters cubed, or, or kilometers cubed. It's always cubed. Okay, or millimeters cubed. But in this case, we're dealing with centimeters, so our volume is in centimeters cubed. Right. So, that's how much stuff can fit into that Tupperware. Now we're going to calculate the volume of, tit, of that tin. In other words, we're going to say what volume of contents is inside that tin. So what we're going to do now, James, is we're going to say, right, I've got a tin. Let's just go here. Now, a tin is round, isn't it? Yep. Okay. And to calculate the volume of a tin, we are going to say the volume is the base times the height. Now, if you show that tin to the camera there, what do you notice about that base, uh, James? It's circular. Okay, you're showing it to the camera, right. So it's a circular base. Hmm. How do I calculate the area of a circle? Two, oh, pi times diameter or radius squared. Nice. Okay, not times, I just radius squared. Okay, radius okay. squared. Absolutely. <laughs> so the area of a circle is pi times r squared times, what did we say? The, the height. height. Okay, nice. So times the height. All right, James. Now in MathLit, we always use 3,14 for pi. Yeah. Would you agree? Okay. Now, to try and find the center of that circle, it's kind of difficult. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to come up to the camera and I'm going to show you this. So I've got a circle. I want to measure the radius. Not me. James is going to measure the radius. So to measure the radius, we have to know where the center of that can is. Now, folks, to find the exact center is kind of difficult. So, James, how can I get around it? Instead of finding the radius? You find the diameter. Nice. We, it's easier to measure the diameter. And then what's the radius? Half of the diameter. Brilliant. Okay, so that's not my job. That's your job. So you're going to go ahead and tell me what that diameter actually is. And we're working in centimeters because that's what you started with. And so we're going to finish the whole problem in 7.5 centimeters. Okay, so we've got a diameter of 7.5. How do we calculate the radius? You divide that by 2. Divide that by 2. Brilliant. So when we divide by 2, we're going to land up getting? 3.75 3.75. Great. So I've got 3... 0.75, right? And we're going to square it. Yeah. Okay. Times, now you do realize, James, if you're making a mess of these measurements, <laughs> you're going to be a mess yourself when <laughs> all that stuff falls over you. Okay. So what is my height? 10.5 centimeters. 10,5 centimeters. Okay. So here we go. Out comes the calculator, and we're going to say we've got 3.14 multiplied by 3.75 squared times 10.5. Yeah. Agreed? Equals, and we land up now with an answer of? 463.74. 4 .64, huh? .64. Okay. 463. .64. .64. Centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed. Brilliant. 
Okay, James, let's have a look now. I have my Tupperware and I have my tin. Mm -hmm. According to this, James, how much volume of goods are in that tin? 463.4 centimeters cubed. How much volume can that Tupperware container take? 591.5. So which can take more? The Tupperware. The Tupperware. In other words, James, mm -hmm. what are you telling me? That the contents that's in here will fit into the Tupperware. Okay. That's quite a statement to make. Knowing that we are going to open this tin, James is going to kneel down. We are going to place the Tupperware on his head. Open the can and pour the contents in. Folks, if it does not all fit in, James is going to have a problem. Especially mm -hmm. because we've still got another 40 minutes of the show and he's going to have to sit there with gush over <laughs> him for 40 minutes of the show, if he's incorrect. So James, without any fear, do come here. Oh, you can't move. Stay where you are for now. What we'll do, I think we're going to take an ad break. Okay. All right? So we'll take an ad break. And then after the air break, we'll do all that. Because I think you're wired up there and yeah, all kinds, so you can't really move. Quite jailed in there. You're quite jailed in there, okay. <laughs> so what might happen, Ibrahim, you and I might go there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but fine. we'll sort that out during the air break and we'll get back to you. I think you've got to say a kind way to eat that food cocktail. Anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Guys, you have the challenge question on our Facebook page. Make sure you go there right now. It is Facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. And the notes links are also there. Whatever Peter is doing, it is is there on your notes guys so it's not a surprise we don't like surprises we always give you stuff but not scope because some of you are asking for a scope we'll just give you study tips and what you need to revise that's all see you after the break Welcome back, my sisters. I've got my ninjas here, and we're ready to, <laughs> to rock and roll. Peter? Right, we're right. So, folks, before <laughs> the air break, James did this phenomenal calculation where he claims that all the contents of this tin and its fruit cocktail in sticky syrup juice, cool, <laughs> will fit into this container. And he's so confident that he's saying he will sit here while we just pour this on in the container He's while the container bold. is on his head but before we do that we thought what we do because we discovered this during the air break <laughs> if we take this tupperware and we rub it against his head like that now it can't cause any harm because you've got to have a brain if you're going to hurt yourself <laughs> so if you do that and you then lift it check what happens to the head it lifts up do you know why Oh, for me, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> static electricity. Okay, and I don't know what that means, but I just think it's cool. So there you <laughs> go, stands up. And I remember our science teacher used to do it with a ruler. Do you remember? Mm. They used to take a ruler and say, rub the ruler against your head, and then your hair will stand up. Cool, it works. It's it amazing. Works. But that's not what we hear. <laughs> All right, so first thing then is we're going to open this cocktail syrup, and it comes nicely with a ready-made open lid. Yes, it looks sticky, eh? You can view can't see it, but it doesn't look good. All right, so, and it's kind of old, so there's a bit of mold there as well. But don't worry, <laughs> you're confident. No, it's not, Okay, Peter. <laughs> Ibrahim, you're going to hold that. Cool. And uh, I think we're going to drop the hand a little bit so the camera can see. And I'm now going to pour. So here we go. Um, I've got to do it carefully as well because we don't really want to. Okay, so it's starting to pour in, Jay. Oh, my goodness, we're already halfway. Things are not looking good. But here we go. And there it is, hey? Uh. It fits in absolutely perfectly. And guys, that's great for if you go camping because now we don't have to eat the whole cocktail. It's not all coming out. So let me just keep bashing here. Is it hurting your head, my boy? No. Okay, you've got to have feelings if it's going to hurt. All right. <laughs> so there we go. Everything is out. And the nice thing now is this, that if I go camping and I don't want to eat the whole thing, I can now seal it and perfect. Right. And that's it. Should we see if this is really sealed? Should I turn it upside down? <laughs> no, that wasn't it. part of the deal. <laughs> okay, so that's how is an experiment, real life thing that we have just proved. And guys, one of the reasons that this actually came up was because on a camping trip I really took, I had the exact problem, where I needed to clear out the tin, but I wanted to see if the stuff would fit in. And I actually did 
a mathematical calculation, like we do in maths lit, wow. to see if it worked. How cool is but that? But that's, that's maths lit, it's real. It's real life, that's another absolutely. Thing, yeah. Okay. So don't you think we've just given them the answer to the challenge question? Well, they've got a card. Well, they don't know if this one's going to work out. <laughs> or not. Remember, okay. we gave them different measurements. Okay. <laughs> now, here's something which uh, we were discussing at break was this. James had to measure the diameter. And so what he did was he actually took the tin and he measured across. But you weren't sure if you'd measured exactly correctly, mm. whether it was in the center or not. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go around to that camera and show our viewers something. All right. Sure. And I think you're going that side. Yeah, I'm going that side. You're taking the fruit, are you? Okay. He's taking the fruit. Let me go to the other camera as well. Right. So here I am. Poor, the poor producer doesn't know where we are, hey? Like <laughs> just all over. <laughs> so what James did earlier, to find the perimeter of this, or diameter of the tip, he actually took the ruler and he measured. But now, guys, he could have measured slightly lower or slightly higher. Remember, diameter's got to be the widest point between the edges of the tin or the circumference. Now, there's an easier way or a more accurate way of actually calculating uh, the diameter. Do you know what it is, James? Um, if you take the circumference... Okay, it's got something to do with circumference, absolutely. <laughs> so, we know that the circumference of a tin is equal to 2 times pi uh, times r. r, or pi times, times d. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. So it's pi times, oops, what have I done? I've written the wrong thing. Quick, let's grab a rub and get rid of it. There we go. <laughs> it's going to be pi times diameter, because this was 2 times r, and 2 radiuses are 1, one diameter. diameter. So in order to calculate, if I can work out the circumference, I can find the diameter. So if I took a string and put it around the tin, I would be able to know what the circumference of that is, because I could put the string around, pull the string out, and have a piece of string. Okay, should we do that? Yeah. But we don't have string, but you've got a shoelace. Yeah. Mm. You yeah, don't I've have a shoelace. I've got one. Okay, you've got a shoelace. Right. Uh, Ibrahim is going to give us a shoelace, which is great. How wonderful is this, eh? That we can just be so practical, we can take off our shoelaces and do all kinds of weird and wonderful <laughs> things. Here's the shoelace. Right, James, there it is. Right, so James has got it now. So what he's going to do is he's going to wrap that shoelace around the tin, okay? And got it? Mm -hmm. Right. Now you're going to measure how long that is with the ruler. So he's taking out the ruler, and he's now measuring the length of that. Do you need some help there, but Okay, so there we go, and we've got... 24 centimetres. 24 centimetres. So he's got a circumference now of 24 centimetres, which is equal to pi times diameter. Okay. How, James, would you find the diameter now? Um, 24 divided by pi. Great. And what is pi? Instead of pi, we're going to write? 3 comma 1 4. Should we do that with a calculator? So we're going to say we've got 24, we get a divided by pi, which is 3.14 equals, and we get an answer of 7 comma 6 4. Okay. So my diameter is 7 comma 6 4. So according to that, what would the radius be? Divided Divi by 2. Brilliant. And what do we get then? 3 comma? 3 comma 8.2. 3 comma 8.2. So 3 comma 8.2 is more realistic radius. Mm. What did you get, James, when you measured it? Um, 3 did comma? 3 comma 7.5. Seven five. So it was very close, eh? Mm. We're talking he was 7 millimeters out, but you were still out. Yeah. And it could have resulted in a very sticky mess <laughs> if the measurements were a little closer. Okay. Guys, you know what? Hey? What I find amazing about Maths Lit is this, that here we are. We've gone through the whole first segment of uh, the show. So the show is divided into three segments. Normally after the first segment, we've already uh, discussed a little bit about the challenge question. We've done some notes, and we're already on the first question. Here we are, end of first segment, into the second one, and we haven't even started looking at the notes because we've been doing a real life practical example and I think that's the exciting thing about maths lit it really is okay I agree I'm gonna get ready for the next question while I am James you're gonna tell us what helps you do well in maths lit 
Okay. Tell our viewers. Um, so basically I've been yeah, it took me quite a while to figure this out, which is quite weird. But at the beginning of the year I didn't didn't do it at all and I've always thought it is it really is just to listen in class. So what is being said in class, do the examples, do the stuff from the book, look at the straight from the textbook, because I guarantee you when they set that exam, it's coming, the same com concepts and everything are coming straight from that textbook. Um, also, another a way of doing things is, if you learn a new section, go home and go over that section and get it done and get it out of your way. So get it into your head and go out of the way. Don't wait for the last minute to, before, before the day before the exam and then suddenly go over because the whole perception is that math is very easy. Um, if you forget those concepts and don't know the methods, you're really going to come short. So go home, go over your work for the day, and you'll be fine. And listen in class. And you'll be fine. Class. Quick okay. question to you, James. Um, what happens in a situation where you've practiced, you know all the content, you get in an exam and you find out, sure, this is like, it's, I've never seen this in my life. Do you freak out? What do you do? No. The minute you freak out, everything is just going to go downhill. So... Look at when you get your question, look what's being asked. If there's an, a value, underline it. Look at what they're asking you, how they're asking you, and what exactly what they want for you. Man. After you've done your whole question, ask yourself, have you answered the actual question? Have you asked, answered exactly what they've asked you for? Because it may, may be different to what you practice, but the only thing that's going to be different is the different values. So nothing will ever be different, and do not freak out in the exam. I like that. You know what? I, I see Peter in you, so <laughs> you're a great version of Peter. Yeah, so one day when they knock me off, he can just he can take, take over. over. How wonderful <laughs> is that? All right, great. Okay, absolutely true. So what James has said is what we always say. Listen in class, guys. When you get an exercise to do, sit down and do the exercise. Don't look and say, oh, this is easy. I know how to do it. Because, like I say to my guys, and like James has said, you know what, by the time you get to write a test or exam, you should be able to recognize every type of question that comes up. The values will be different, as James had rightly said, but the style of the question and, and what they're asking, you should say, geez, I remember the examiner asked that like two or three years ago, and I know that because I've done those past papers and worked through them. All right. Now that we've done all that, let's get on to the summary for today. My goodness, this is normally <laughs> what we do in the first five minutes of the show. Right. So, like I said, we're looking at the volume of a rectangular prism. And, guys, that's a, a rectangular prism, just like our Tupperware container was that we put all the stuff in. Where did that Tupperware container go? Oh, here we go. Okay, so Ibrahim stole it because he wanted the food. <coughs> all right. So, that's the Tupperware <laughs> container. This is called a rectangular prism. We also looked at the, or we'll be looking, and we have been looking at the volume of a cylinder. James, hold up the cylinder. Let's have a look. So a cylinder is just like a can or a tin. And then the final one we tend to look at on the odd occasion is the volume of a triangular prism. And that's a triangle that's got a bit of height to it. Okay? Right. Something similar to a sandwich. And, and sometimes when you go into a shop and you buy a sandwich from a shop, they come in those lovely plastic... Mm, from Woolworths. Well, we're not allowed to say shops bet, here. Okay, yeah. but yeah, from <laughs> certain shops. You can't say Woolworths or Pick and Pay on the show. We're not allowed to advertise for them. Okay. But it's from a plastic container where the sandwich goes in. And that's like a triangular prism. Right. Let's go on to our very first question. James, my goodness, we're using your name's coming up a lot tonight, James. Yeah, All right, here we go. Sir. James lives on a farm. He relies on a water tank to keep drinking water for his chickens. <laughs> the water tank, as illustrated above, has a height of 3 meters and a diameter of 2 meters. Now, James, if you read that in the exam, what's the first thing you're going to do? Highlight the values. Okay, let's highlight the values. 3 meters and 2 meters. So we told this thing has a height of 3 meters. We told it has a diameter of two meters. Inches. If it has a diameter of two meters, James, what are we going to say? It has a radius of one meter. Nice. It's got a radius of one, one meter. meter. And I always say to the chaps in my class, guys, the word diameter is like a swear word. We don't use it. So if you see diameter, get rid of it and write radius, because radius tends to come up a lot more in formulas than, than diameter, diameter does. Okay. 
So here's the question. What is the volume of the water tank? Remember that volume of a cylinder is pi times R squared times H. Okay, James. So pi we know is? 3,14. Nice. And you should know that, guys, all the time, right? That should be something you just know. It will be given to you in exam, but it's so much easier, and you feel so much confidence if you know these facts. So 3,14. What is my radius, James? You did say it. We've got a diameter of 2, one so meter. my radius is? 1. 1 meter. Fantastic. Square. And what is my height? Your height is 3 meters. Great. Okay, so out comes our calculator, and... Um, we're going to say we've got 3.14, multiply that now by 1 squared, multiply that by 3, and we get an answer of... 9,42 9, meters cubed. Nice. And again, emphasis on the cube. Why? Because it's volume. Because we're dealing in volume. And chaps, here's something, hey. Sometimes examiners are horrible people. They really are. And they get quite finicky if you don't put that little cube there. So if you said 9,42 squared, the examiners or the marks are going to look at it and say, oh, fantastic, we don't have to give them full marks for this. Okay, they're horrible people, these, eh? <laughs> so, put in cubed. Right, next question. Here we go. If one liter of water can fit into a space of 1,000 centimeters cubed, then determine how many liters of water can fit into the water tank if it's 95% filled. All right. Now, I've got a problem. And my problem is this. I've got units, which are, James? Centimeters cubed. And what's our previous answer in? S meters cubed. Meters cubed. So, folk, we've now got to change that centimeters cubed into meters cubed. Now, in order to do that, We've got to remember the following. And I'm going to run right to the bottom of the page. And I did this today with my class, actually, and it was quite cool. If I'm dealing with perimeter, I'm dealing with what sort of a dimensional thing, James? Um, a one-dimensional yeah, one kind dimensional. of thing. Okay. Because if I look at a line, it's just got a length, mm -hmm. right? So this unit's in centimeters. Now, if I'm dealing in an area, James, what sort of dimensional figure am I dealing with? Two dimensional. Two dimensional. Because it's got length and it's got breadth. breadth. Agreed? So here, let's go back to our line. So for our line, what I'm going to say is this. I've got uh, centimeters or, or meters. To change meters to centimeters, what are we going to do? Times by 100. Times by 100. And then we'll get? Cent well, ce uh, centimeters. Centimeters. Okay, if I've got area, and I've got meters squared, now, folks, for this two-dimensional thing, not only do I change the length from meters to centimeters, but I've also got to change the breadth. So, in changing the length, if it was one-dimensional, I would times it by? A hundred. Fantastic. But it's two-dimensional. So I've also got to do that. So what am I going to do again, James? Times by 100. Times by 100. Brilliant. Okay. And that I will now convert into centimeters Jeez. squared. Oops, Square. that's a 2. Okay. Right. That's an important concept. It gets even more interesting. Let's have a look. If I've got meters cubed. Now, meters cubed, when I'm dealing with volume, James, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with what sort of dimension? Three dimensional. Three dimensional. Just like this container, folk. So it's got a height, it's got a length, and it's got a breadth. Okay? So now, when I deal with my three dimensional container, and let's try and draw a three dimensional container here. There we go. That looks like quite a cool container, actually. All right? Mm -hmm. we've, uh, it's impressive, eh? So yeah. we've got <laughs> meters to change. Meters, if it was one dimension, what would I do? Times of 100. Brilliant. If it's two dimensional, times like area? By another 100. By 100. But we're dealing with cube. So times of 100. By another. And that would give me centimeters? Cube. cube. Okay. Now, having said that, let's go back to this question. If one liter of water can fit into a space of 1,000 centimeters cubed, now, we know our water tank is 9,42 meters, meters cubed. So I've got to change that meters cubed to centimeters cubed. So let's do that. So we're going to say I've got 
it's meters cubed. Right, James, I want to change it to centimeters cubed. What am I going to do? Times it by 100. Then? Again and, and again. Nice, because it's? Cubed. One unit, area, volume. volume. Fantastic. Okay. So let's do that with the calculator. Otherwise, we're going to get mixed up with mm. all these noughts, okay? So there, times 100, times 100, times another 100. And I land up with this huge thing of 9,420,000. Okay, cool. So I've got 9,420,000 what, James? Centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed. But I know that a thousand centimeter cubed is equal to one liter. So I've got to find out how many thousands will fit into nine million. So how am I going to do that? Divided by a thousand. Divided by a thousand. Absolutely. So out comes this wonderful figure. We're going to say divide that now by a thousand and we get an answer of? 9,420. Brilliant. 9,420 liters. liters of water. Sure, this is a lot of work. Mm. In fact, I'm running dry here, so I think we need to take another ad break. Yes, we should. Let's do that. Right, after the ad break, guys, I'll be announcing who won last week on our Casio calculator. So do stay tuned. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Awesome Minds. It is now the moment that we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please, Peter. I need to announce the winner. I'm not good at that. Okay, you James, better. drum roll. Well done. Our winner is Samugelo. Congratulations. This awesome gadget is coming your way. It is a must have, a cool buddy for exams. You need it. So to enter, make sure that you, you answer the test yourself questions. The link is on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra. Peter, back to you. Right, do you have any shout outs for us today or not really? Um, not really. Not really. Yeah. We <laughs> received two during the ad break. The one was from a girl by the name of Kirsten Grace van der Volt in Johannesburg. Apparently she was born in Pofada. I'm not sure where <laughs> that is, but um, nevertheless, there she is. So how's it, Kirsten, apparently you're watching us. Great of you to do that. And I believe you're actually the girlfriend of James. Really? Oh, <laughs> how sad is that, hey? Is it sad? It's very sad. I Why? mean, obviously, she's got no taste whatsoever. Oh. Okay. 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 <laughs> no, I'm joking. He's a great guy. Kirsten, you're a lucky lady. All right? And then another shout-out for my future sister-in-law. Her name's Megan, and she complains because we never mention her on the show. Oh, so no. I'll do that. All right. A big right. shout-out to Megan. Let's get back to the chickens. So, before the ad break, <laughs> we were looking at a farm that James owned, and he's trying to get... Uh, save some water in a tank or he keeps water in a tank so that his chickens can drink water every day i didn't know chickens drink water did you know they drink water uh, they, they do, do. You know that chickens drink up to half a liter of water every day that is phenomenal mm. okay mm. she's mess let we learn everything now we on to chickens okay so <laughs> so james worked out here that this container contains nine thousand four hundred and twenty liters here goes the question about the chickens and the water how much water in liters does James need every day for his 543 chickens if each chicken drinks 500 mils of water per day? Yes, that's a lot of chickens, though. Mm -hmm. okay. 543 chickens have got to drink 500 mils of water every day. So we want to work out how many liters. James, this is easy, isn't it? Yep. We've got 543 chickens. How much water in liters do they drink? Well, 500 divided by 1,000 will give you how many liters. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, do you know how many liters that is? More a half a liter. Hey? Half a liter. Right. There we go. So 543. <laughs> you know what? Hey? We mentioned his girlfriend. On the <laughs> and all and of a sudden, his head is gone. His it's brain's are like, gone. Yeah. What's wrong so with Kirsten, you? Kirsten, I think you've messed up our show completely tonight. <laughs> right. and thank you. So 543. Let's go. 543 multiplied by half a liter, which gives us an answer of 271. Okay, so every day, James, you need 271,5 liters just to keep the chickens hydrated. Mm. Right. Now, let's look at the next question. How long will the water in the water tank last 
if James never fills it, and if the chickens get the required amount of water every day. Right. How are we going to do that, James? Sorry, that again, sorry. How, how much <laughs> long, for how many days? Um, this Kirsten, I don't know. <laughs> you, you've, you've got this funny effect on this guy. It's just like, I'll, I'll answer the question. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we now need to know how long will this water last if the chickens get 271,5 liters of water every day. Now remember, the tank has 9,420 liters. So 9,420 liters can go into the tank. Every day we are using 271,5 liters. So how long is that going to last? Well, out comes our calculator, and we say 9,200... Oops, no, that's not what it was. What 9, was it? 9,420. There we go. Thank you. 9,420 liters. We're going to divide it by... 271.5. Cool. And we get an answer of... 34.6. Oh, what do you mm. say here, James? 34.7. Nice. Two decimal places. Look at that, guys. 34,696. So if we're rounding to two decimal places, that six makes that 69, a eh? 70. So it's 34, comma, 70. Comma, seven, zero days. Mm. Okay. How many full days has it lasted, James? Well, 35. No. Oh, sorry. 34, days, 34 eh? Days, sorry. So on the 35th day, we run out of water. Chickens gasping for breath. Longing for a little <laughs> bit of rain. James not giving them water. Chickens passing out, left, right and center. All 543. We have a mess on the farm. Guys running around trying to save chicken. Spitting in a bowl. No, that would be terrible. Okay, let's go on to our next question. Here it is. All right. In fact, you know what? I think time's really going. We've got to get on to that challenge question. Yeah, okay? yeah. Because um, we've only got 10 minutes left. And then if we have time, we'll come back all this okay so let's go and find <laughs> right <laughs> challenge question here it is on a camping trip james buys a tin of jam the tin is 90 millimeters high and has a diameter of six centimeters unfortunately once opened the tin cannot be closed so james decides to put the jam into a rectangular tupperware with dimensions 60 by 30 by 25 will all the jam from the tin fit into the tupperware Okay, James, you remember what we did. What's mm -hmm. the first thing we did? We found the area, I mean the volume of the Tupperware. Nice. Volume of the Tupperware, it was a rectangular prism, so it's length times, times breadth times, times height. Times. Okay, so we know we're dealing with... Millimeters. 60 millimeters times by... 30. 30 millimeters times by... 25. 25 millimeters. Okay. Right, so out it comes, and we're going to say 60, multiply that by 30, multiply that by 25, 25 and we get an answer of? 45,000 millimeters cubed. Nice, 45,000 millimeters cubed. Has to be cubed because we're dealing in? Volume. Volume. All right, then we are now going to say um, the volume of the tin. And the volume of the tin is the area of the base times the height, okay? Area of a circle is? Pi times radius squared. Nice. Times, times the? Times the height. Height. All right. Now, pi is 3,14 multiplied by, do you remember the radius of the tin? No, we told the diameter, okay? So the radius would be 6. Three. Three. Sorry. So the radius, the diameter is six, the radius is going to be three. three. But, folk, and I just want to caution us here. What was the unit we used when we were working with the Tupperware, James? Millimeters. Millimeters. And now suddenly they're giving it to us in centimeters. Millimeters. This is not a good thing, folk. All right. It's not a good thing at all. So rather change the unit so we're dealing with both the tin and the rectangular Tupperware in the same unit. So let's change the six centimeters to millimeters. millimeters. How many millimeters in a centimeter, James? Ten. Absolutely. So six centimeters is sixty millimeters. <laughs> millimeters. Okay. All right. 
Listen, guys, I think he's just very, it's twofold, hey? When you're on live TV, you kind of get nervous, so I think <laughs> you're a little nervous. And then, of course, because we mentioned the name Kirsten. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, all right. <laughs> I've got to meet this Kirsten. Kirsten, tomorrow, come and say hi to me because, okay, right. So, here we go. So, instead of radius now um, in centimeters, we're going to say it's millimeters, and we're going to change it to 30. Times the height of my tin. What is the height of my tin? The height of my tin is 90, 90 millimeters. millimeters. And it's already given in millimeters, so which is a fantastic thing. Okay, so out comes the calculator again, and we are going to say 3,14 times 30 squared times 90. And we get an answer of 254,340. 254,000. 340 okay. millimeters cubed. Brilliant. Now, James, I need to ask you, what is, how much can my Tupperware take? 45,000 millimeters cubed. Okay, and how much can my tin take? 254. Which can take more? The Tupperware. No, no. Wait, hold on. Sorry, my, sorry, the tin, the tin. Yes, this Kirsten thing is messed up. <laughs> no. So, the Tupperware <laughs> takes more because it's 240, 54, uh, thousand millimeter square where's a tin could only take 45,000 mm. so in other words folk if I had taken the contents of that tin and poured it into the Tupperware it would have just gushed all over okay would never have fitted and if we'd done it with James it would have made a mess mm. all over <laughs> kind of sorry we didn't use these measurements on it we should have <laughs> right so here we go <laughs> Next question. In fact, that's the end of our challenge question, but we still got a good six minutes. So I'm going to get back to one of my previous questions. Okay, here we go. Um, Jamie, go on. Uh, let's just go back here. Yeah? All right, here's a nice question for us to do. Okay, let's have a look at this. Calculate how much liters of water is needed to fill the pool if naught comma naught naught one meter cubed equals one liter so let's have a look at this so we're told that this is a swimming pool in other words this is our top view and what's the top view james bird's eye view okay in yeah. other words if i'm standing on top so if i'm hovering in a helicopter or flying on a plane and i look down that's what i see and this is what i see the top view in other words the pool has a length of 12 meters and a breadth of four mm -hmm. meters the side view is saying what? The side view is when you look at it from the side. Absolutely, <laughs> just like it says. Hey? So if again I were to look at this, all right, let's pretend this is a swimming pool. The top view, that's what you're going to see. Okay? The side view, that's what you see. Now we've got a problem with this problem behind us. And here's the problem. This is not a pool where you get in and it's flat the whole way. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. James, what happens? It's got a nice shallow end. How deep is the shallow end? 0.8 meters. 0.8 meters. Then it's got a deep end of? 2.2 meters. 2.2 meters. But as you see, when you get into the shallow side, what's actually happening is you start walking down and you start going down, don't you? Mm. So it's like one of the... In fact, you should do this because this is a drama thing, but you're tied up with wires here. <laughs> but if you walk... Is the camera on me? Can you, okay, cool. So if you walk, what's going to happen is you're going to start going... You could do that. That's a drama thing you do. Okay, so you start going <laughs> down, 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 down because the pool is going down at an angle. So what we want to do is say how much water can fit into... That swimming pool. Now we do have a problem because it's not a regular shape. It's a weird shape. So, there are two ways of doing this. One, we can find the volume of three different shapes. Can you see what we've done? We've broken it up into a rectangle, a bigger rectangle, and a triangle. Okay. Or, what we can do is this. Let's get rid of those lines and let's say the following. Let's say, let's complete this. Now, how many shapes do I have, James? One. Absolutely. One big one and one 
Oh, little no, ones. Yeah. Okay. Little ones. So we can find the area of the big sh or volume of the big shape, find the volume of the little one, and subtract the one from the other. Okay. So time is moving on. I'm going to try and get as far as I can. If we don't finish, don't panic because all the answers are on the website. Okay. And I know that because I put them there. Right. So <laughs> here we go. So the volume of my pool is going to be length times breadth times height. Do you agree, James? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, James, how long is this pool? 12 meters. 12 meters. How wide is this pool? It was 4 meters, eh? Okay. And the height of it, we're going to take the full height, which is 2,2 meters, right? And that's going to give us the volume of that whole area. So if this was a flat level pool, was only a deep end, you got in and you drowned, okay? There was no shallow end, so you were underwater here. The volume of that would be 12 times 4 times 2.2. So out comes our calculator, and let's do that. We've got now 12 times 4 times 2.2 equals, and we get an answer of? 105,6. Okay, 105,6 meters cubed. Cubed, nice, eh? All right. But we are going to subtract this little area because that doesn't have water on. So let's get rid of it. What shape is that? A triangle. Triangular prism. Nice. So we're going to say for a triangular prism, for a normal prism, it's length times, times breadth times height. height. But we know a triangle is half of that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's subtract a half times, now James, the length of this triangle from this point to this point is how long? 12 minus 4. Okay, excellent. We knew the whole area was 12. That whole thing is 12. There it tells us we're subtracting the 4, which is going to give me? 8. 8. Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> times. Now, the breadth we would have to calculate that as well and all the rest. I've just been told we've run out of time. Folk, I'm really sorry about that, but the answers are in your book. Kiddo, we'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a great show, and James, yeah, next time, focus. <laughs> but thanks for the <laughs> tips, though. My teachers, you've heard it. Pay attention in class and make sure that you underline whatever you don't understand when you get a question that you've never got before. Of course, you'll never get a question that you've got unless you've got a nice teacher such as Peter. But we love you guys, and we just want to leave you in peace.